Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez again. Uh, welcome to our channel. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit more about my hanchi as a trapping the legs type kata, based on a hanchi meaning that in the uh, Mandarin, according to uh, quite a few people. Now, before I do that, I there is a misconception that a lot of people have. A lot of people think that hanchi means iron horse. The truth is teki, which is how the name that it was given to it in uh, Shotokan means Iron Horse. Naihachi doesn't mean Iron Horse. Uh, Iron Horse isn't anywhere in Naihachi. That was a name that uh, Funakoshi gave the kata to honor one of his teachers, Ito Suwanku. Now, with that I should actually mention, there are some names that have been changed uh, in different styles. There are sometimes various ways to say the same uh, kata. For instance, I actually do a style, a uh, Kusanku, and uh, our Kusanku can also be said Kushanku, uh, there's another one that uh, Okan can be one con, uh, one shu, on shu. Uh, so you do have variation on pronunciation of the katas, and it's just the way it is. And there are some katas that are the same katas, but <coughs> done in a different style, so it carries a different name. Now, one of the things a lot of people talk about is how their karate doesn't change. It's exactly the way it was taught back in the beginning of times when the uh, the magical creatures from the treetops with uh, really long noses and red faces came down and taught people. I'm joking around, I know. But one of the nice things is we do have a couple books which actually show us pictures of how different katas were done. Now here we actually see Funakoshi himself as a relatively young man doing naihanchi. And what you notice is the stance is actually higher than what most people are doing nowadays. You also will notice, I'll actually use this picture here is you'll actually notice the feet are actually pointing outward not per parallel there are actually there is one picture here where it is actually parallel to but it almost seems like the in the original versions of it remember this is actually what he was this one is a translation of his 1920s uh, uh, book which is when he first brought karate to japan he did it a certain way now to actually show you some other things and i don't do show uh Shotokan, but I do have a lot of Shotokan books. I did find this other book on, uh, it was actually given to me, uh, interesting uh, story that a gentleman who had this was originally a different style, completely different than mine, and he uh, he felt he got burned, but he actually felt abandoned by his style, and so things that he ended up not wanting to give this away, so he gave it, decided to give it to me instead. Now, in this one, you actually do start seeing longer stances, but okay, you can see what I'm talking about. But they're still not at the level, the length of the stances that were actually as they are done nowadays. And this one was actually was a uh, the Budokan International, which spread it out, and it's from Malaysia, the uh, president of Malaysia. Uh, they actually do have a lot of. Uh, it's actually 1970s that it was made, so we can see how. Things have progressively changed one, from one to another. Now, I did use uh, Shotokan because it was two books that I have. Um, the books I have from my style, usually it has, it's maintained relatively natural stances. But what you see is there has been a change in karate. Now, I actually was fortunate that I had a teacher who used to tell me he was going to teach, and I've mentioned this before, he always said he was going to teach me his karate, but it was up to me to make, my, make it my own karate. He actually told me sometimes to bring stuff in, sometimes to uh, take stuff out, and to look at every art, not just karate, but every art, every sport, everything that used movement to see how they did it to develop power. Now, the reason is, if you really think about how much money is in uh, learning how to do something in karate versus how much there is in learning how to, for, for instance, uh, throw a ball you throw a ball harder and faster in baseball, there's a lot more money in something like baseball, uh, especially when you're doing research, than in karate. And so we can actually use the body mechanics from baseball and modify them for karate. Now, some people say, no, karate is this, that's that. But the truth is, the body only way moves in certain ways. Now, the other thing I actually told, I was told by Thomas Sensei to do, and I am doing it, is look at other martial arts, too. For instance, one of the things that keeps coming up over and over again is when people measure punches and they actually use the force developed and the weight uh, western boxing tends to have more force pound for pound so the idea is 
we should be looking at how if we're in karate kaz and we actually want to advance our own karate, our personal karate, we have to look at these arts. What does boxing do to develop harder punches? You have a lot of people who do, uh, uh, what is it, uh, kickboxing. And they have great kicks. Uh, Kapura, you know, you've heard me say a lot about it. They have great kicks in Taekwondo. And to just put my head in the sand and say, well, you know, I'm not going to look at these um, because it's not my karate, really limits the range that I can use to determine what's better. Now, I do use a biomechanics, which is something that everyone should be doing if you're modifying your art to yourself, because this way you know what works. Actually, if you're teaching at all, if you're a black belt, a shodan, I don't care if you're a shodan ho first, if you're a black belt, you really should be looking at the body mechanics to see what you're really teaching. Now, like I said, my teacher, Taba Sensei, was big on change stuff. And the Nihanshi I do is not exactly the Nihanshi he did. Um, I, he actually didn't like the wave kick. Uh, some people call it the wave kick, where you're here and you come up this way. I, and he, but he had told me, if you find a reason to use it, then go ahead and put it back in. So that's what I did. And one of the nice things that I think uh, my old late teacher would be happy of is that every person who trained under him is doing things slightly different than everyone else. They're actually making their karate. He probably didn't just tell me this, that he, I'm assuming he told everyone the same thing. Make karate your own karate. Now, I mentioned the karate in the seminar. I also uh, wanted to actually mention a TV show that I saw, which, you know, a lot of people tore apart, and that's the uh, Iron Fist. Now, truth is, I don't do kung fu, but I can actually watch a movie and say, okay, well, you know, it's kung fu. It's kung fu is a beautiful art. It has a lot of big movements a lot of times, and there's reasons why they would do that. They also do use, if you watch, to anyone who does Kung Fu, they use a lot of this whipping motion. Now, some of them can end up getting really fast and powerful punches. Uh, if you watch, uh, there was a thing which I didn't like the entire thing because they didn't do all the mathematical calculations they should have, but there was a uh, fight science where they had a guy who did uh, Kung Fu, and he had the ability to throw a punch faster than most people. And that's, you know, we if we're dealing with speed, we have to look at that as well, how they did it. Now, the uh, the movie, like I said, it was I, the TV show was Iron Fist on Netflix. And a lot of people badmouthed the, everything on it. Now, I actually watched it, having read a couple of the reviews, thinking, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it because I love superhero movies. And I started look, thinking of some of the things that people said bad about it. For instance, a lot of people talked about how he gets back home and... Uh, you know, he doesn't, he isn't able to prove himself and people don't want him to prove himself as being who he he said he was. Well, I actually would ask you guys, imagine if your best friend disappeared for 15 years and then some random person says, oh yeah, you know, he's your be best friend. By the way, you also have been told your best friend had, was killed. Now, if you're, if you think about it, someone like that would, you know, do they have a reason to claim to be who your best friend is if they're a multimillionaire? Well, the answer is yes. Would you suspect them? I mean, you think about it, you haven't seen this person for 15 years, obviously. Uh, the other thing is how the main, well, the main villain's son act, acted. Uh, and the thing is, you have to remember, if you think about it, you actually can say, well, this person is someone who's been used to being manipulated. How, you know, how is he gonna react when something comes and challenges his, pretty much his position? everything he believed, and the fact that he's been manipulated, he would also probably, and this would take a psychologist more to talk about, but he probably would react a little different than what most people. Now, like I said, there are some stuff that I didn't like, and, but part of this has to do with the way I trained and the way different people trained. My training was actually different. When my teachers, they treat, teach me one, actually more of them and one of me, and they fix everything they can. They, all, they spend a lot of time with me doing this. They don't hit me or anything like that, but they do tell me to do body conditioning, which I do on my own. In the movie, they actually had the guy getting beaten. And for me, that's not the way I was taught, but there, I, know, I do know that there are some people that that's the way their martial art works. So, you know, that is one of the things. Now, the, little, the things that I didn't like about the TV show were minor things that I was able to look away. But there actually was something that was really interesting. There's a part where uh, one of the character cuts another another uh, one of the villains' uh, head, neck, 
And one of the neat things about this is they didn't make the typical mistake everyone does where it's just like, get the knife and come here. They show effort going in. Think about this. If you take your pulse here, it's not right here. It, you have to go deep to feel it. Well, maybe, maybe my neck is fatter than yours, but no, really, you actually have to push in pretty hard to get in. That's where you have to get to if you were actually going to be doing that. It's not that easy. Uh, and so, like I said, there were actually a lot of things I liked about the movie, uh, the TV show, I guess. Some of the stuff I didn't. But that's not what you're here for. We're going to talk about the, um, the, the how she has trapping. Now, one of the things you'll notice, and I'll actually have this video at the end, is in some styles of Nihanshi, you drop when you get into the Nihanshi. Now, if you were to be fighting close in and you drop on someone, your knee goes to the side of their knees. And that movement, I have a picture here, that movement would act in this direction here. To prevent damage of the knee actually breaking, uh, snapping ligaments, what usually happens is the person rotates their leg in. When they rotate their leg in, they shift their weight to their back leg. Now, the neat thing about this is if your entire weight is in the back leg, it doesn't take much force for someone to whip it up and grab it. Now, once someone whips it up and grabs it, you're actually in the air, and this move here will actually throw you down. Uh, I'll show you the video to uh, show you. Well, I'll show you the video next. Uh, I did want to just let you guys know is I've been reading a lot of people talking about Koshi, what it is and isn't, and why it doesn't work for them or why it does work. And one of the things I actually found is it is actually misunderstood a lot of times at least based on my understanding of what my teacher taught me. And I'm going to actually bring that up next week. The other, I guess uh, that's it. I'll hope you enjoy the video. And some people actually teach a bounce. And if you watch here, if I bend my knee here to bounce, it actually removes all the weight here and it actually shift it. Oh, yeah. Now, the next move, can you hands? The next move in Aikanchi after here is actually, they call it the wave kick. Uh, you come up here. So what you do is here, give me the other hand so you don't fall. And uh, here, as I'm putting pressure here, I just lift and grow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so again, it's one of the ideas of dropping the leg. Thank you. Now, looking at the knee, what ends up happening is, as you press on the side here, it would do damage to the uh, ligaments here. So what you do is you shift your legs on the this one. So when I'm hitting here, all the weight's coming this way. I'm hitting here, all the weight's coming this way. And so it ends up destabilizing the knee, so the weight shifts to prevent injury. So when I come here, it ends up kicking it up.